Right now, we're right outside the Route 66 town of Newberry Springs. And today we're gonna to explore a part of the town where poor planning, bad road management by the government, and environmental overuse led to a part of the town being swallowed by the Mojave Desert. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. My name is Steve. Right now we're in the town of Newberry Springs, California, and we're in the part of the town that's starting to be reclaimed by the Mojave Desert. As you can see from the road behind me, the sand is starting to take over. So let's explore this part of town, but before we do, let's kind of talk about the backstory of what's going on here. Newberry Springs is a Mojave Desert town that was located on Route 66 east of Barstow. Despite it being a fairly small town, it has more than its fair share of interesting history. Recently I did a video on Mrs. Orcutt's driveway, which is also located in Newberry Springs, and in that video I mentioned that she had a lake on her property. A lot of people asked in the comments where she got the water for the lake, and I should have mentioned this in that video, but there is a large aquifer under the desert in this area, fed by the Mojave River. The Mojave River is pretty unique because for most of its 110 miles, it travels underground. The water usually only comes up to the surface in areas with impermeable rock, but when there are heavy rains in the San Bernardino Mountains, flooding is possible. You can see the dry river area here as it heads through the northern part of Newberry Springs. That brings us to our first reason why a section of the town has been buried by the desert. They built part of it in the dry river basin. While building a neighborhood in the river basin probably wasn't a good idea, it was only the first mistake. In this area, there are only two roads that cross the Mojave River. Harvard Road in the east, which you can see here, and Mineola Road in the west. Mineola Road would frequently get covered by sand, and the county was responsible for clearing it. In 1979, the county decided that when clearing the road, they would dump all the sand on the downwind side of the road to stop it from blowing back onto the road and recovering it. Unfortunately for the neighborhood that was built in the river basin, they were even further downwind, so a lot of that extra sand started accumulating on their properties. After numerous complaints, the county stopped dumping the sand in 1991, 12 years after they started. Eight residents sued the county for $6 million, but incredibly the county turned around and countersued a number of different utilities, the Santa Fe Railroad, and pretty much the entire town. In the end, the residents ended up getting a settlement, and part of that settlement agreement was that the county could no longer dump sand back into the riverbed. By this point, it was really just too late. The widespread pumping of groundwater in the area dried out even more sand, making matters even worse. The people who lived here spent thousands of dollars to try to hold back the sand, but they just couldn't keep up. Eventually, they had to leave and the neighborhood was abandoned. All right, so let's head down this road into the river basin. In this part of town, they don't even try to maintain the roads anymore. It's a lost cause. It's going to be interesting to see what's left of this neighborhood. It's been abandoned completely since the early 2000s, and as time goes by, more and more of it is disappearing under the sand. The road's not that bad right here, but it looks like it completely disappears just ahead. I believe people started moving into this area here in the riverbed in the 1950s and I don't know what it looked like then versus now, I mean I imagine it was less sandy than it is now, but looking at this riverbed, I mean you can clearly see that we're in a riverbed, you really have to question, why would you build a house here? I mean you're challenging mother nature and mother nature is undefeated. Wow, that looks like it might be a chimney sticking out of the ground by the tree. Let's head over and check that out real quick. So as you can see with the house behind me, only the chimney and the very top of the walls are out of the sand now. That house is pretty much under a sand dune. 
Wow, I mean, we're almost on the roof right now. That kind of gives you an idea of how much sand has come through here. If seeing this house doesn't illustrate just how much sand has come through here, take a look over here. These bushes back here, these aren't bushes, these are trees that have been almost completely covered in sand. This is pretty crazy. Wow, just take a look at the trees coming through the sand. This reminds me of Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona, but not the Petrified Forest National Park of today, the Petrified Forest National Park of 200 million years ago. In, in 200 million years from now, this is gonna be the new Petrified Forest National Park. It's pretty crazy to think. I mean, this was somebody's front yard or, or backyard at one point. Now, it's a sand dune. There's just a little bit of a structure poking out here. It looks like maybe some fencing behind it. Yeah, just the very top of this chain link fence is poking through the sand still. Here's another top of a house poking through the sand. I can't even imagine what it was like to live here before it was abandoned, having to fight the sand every day. I imagine it was just getting everywhere and there's no way you'd be able to keep it all out of your house. And as time went by, it just got worse and worse and worse. Let's take a look inside here. I mean, this is crazy. This reminds me of that old History Channel show, Life After People. Another building over there sticking through the sand. I'm on top of one of those tree sand dunes right now trying to get a little bit of a breeze because it is hot out here. If you want the experience of what it's like to be here just wherever you're at, turn your heater all the way up to high just to kind of get an idea because it is sweltering. Wow, you look all around and you just see buried buildings everywhere. I know it's hard to see because of the sand, but there are probably at least six houses sticking through. And I imagine there are probably some buildings completely buried at this point as well. Everything but the roof is buried on this one. This house tried to build a wall to stop the sand, but ultimately it only slowed things down. The power lines have all been removed around here, but you can still see the pole sticking out of the dunes. This was someone's home, and they did all they could to try and save it, as I think most people would do. You can only hold off nature for a while though. You can't do it forever. If you look at this area on Google Maps, it will still show you all the streets in this neighborhood. Those streets are long gone though. Maybe some future archaeologists will discover them under the sand one day and try to solve the mystery of why there is a neighborhood in a riverbed. So that's our look at the buried city of Newberry Springs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.